They say it was the largest man-made migration of animals in history. Up to 10 million longhorns thundering up the trail. In their wake, besides dust, entire industries and even towns sprung up to support life on the trail. In 1874, Joseph McCoy wrote, So many cattle have been driven over the trail in the last few years that a broad highway is tread out looking much like a national highway. So plain, a fool could not fail to keep in it. Twenty years later, McCoy would marvel at the cattle economy in Abilene, amounting to more than $3 million yearly. More than $85 million today. What began as a simple way to get a product to market became such a massive enterprise that it spun off dozens of other industries, creating a uniquely Texas culture. Several products were invented or improved upon to support the booming industry. Saddles designed with the long-distance drive in mind. The classic high-heeled leather boot adapted to endure the rigors of the trail. The emergence of less expensive hemp nautical ropes from back east, to name a few. The cattle themselves provided more than just beef. Horn made great chairs, combs and buttons. Soaps and candles were produced from the rendered cow fat, called tallow. And a cow's bones could be ground up to make a darn good fertilizer. Another product developed during this time actually led to the Chisholm Trail's undoing, barbed wire. A new fencing allowed, for the first time, Texas to be chopped up into private plots of land, closing the open range and shutting off the Chisholm Trail from the cattle drives forever. More than a century later, the legacy of cowboys and cattle drives still permeates Texas culture, not just in our rodeos and ranches, but in how we dress, what we eat, how we decorate our homes. Folks come from around the globe to experience a unique culture that was born from those legendary cattle drives. The Chisholm Trail it still excites us, long after the last Longhorn walked up the trail. <laughs>